So our Sunday school lesson, we're in our first lesson of the month. We thank God for um, my assistant, the assistant Sunday school um, person, uh, Deaconess Mothers. We thank God for her. We thank God for her faithfulness, even away on her birthday. And happy birthday, by the way, to um, her. She's very faithful. I appreciate you. I don't take it for granted. Amen. Um, that you're um, helping me. Amen. And so our Sunday school lesson is righteousness and wisdom. And our Bible basis is found in Proverbs 3, 1 through 12. Our Bible truth is trusting in God's wisdom helps develop strong faith. I'll read that again. Trusting in God's wisdom helps develop strong faith. Our memory verse, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. And that's Proverbs three and five. Our lesson aim is by the end of this lesson, we will identify God's principles for living purposeful lives. Trust that God's wisdom reveals purpose and meaning of life and seek God's wisdom when making choices in daily life. And our background scriptures is found in Proverbs 3 and 1, 1 through 35. Um, and that is our lesson, uh, the Bible truth, the memory verse, and a lesson aim. Praise God. This is a very good lesson. Um, I hope um, that you were able to go on to the uh, Kojic um, online and they, they're they actually allowing you to download the commentary right now. So so that so that's a blessing in itself. Um, so I don't know how many have books, but um, those who have books are those who have downloaded. Um, if you can read, if, if not, I can just go ahead and read the lesson um, for this morning. Hopefully we'll get our commentaries in soon. Uh, we'll I can help you. Okay, thank you, Nick and Ms. Mother. Would you like me to start reading? Yes, thank you. Amen. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them up on the tablet table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Would someone else like to read? I will say, be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So thine bones shall be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as the father, the son in whom he delighted. God bless you. You muted. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you all both for reading our uh, lesson scriptures for this morning. Righteousness and wisdom. And this was King Solomon talking to his son. Amen. We need righteousness along with wisdom these days to get us through, to get by. Amen. Um, our lesson um, aim said by the end of the lesson, we will identify God's principles for living purposeful lives. And our, all of our lives have purpose. All of us are here for a purpose. And we need to know that. 
And so yes. it goes on to say, trust that God's wisdom reveals purpose and meaning of life and seek God's wisdom when making choices in daily life. And that's why um, the, the fifth verse, Proverbs 3 and 5, told us to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thy own understanding. You know, sometimes we want to take things into our own hands, simple things we want to take into our own hands because we think, oh, I can, I can handle this. But we have to acknowledge God in all of our ways. Everything that we do, everything that we say, how we live, how we go in and come out. I know the older saints back in the, in the days used to say, Lord, bless my going in and coming out. And now I understand it now since I'm getting up there at age. You know, I was a baby Christ and probably like in my 20s, my late 20s. And it's like now I understand that scripture. I mean, not the scripture, but what they're saying, bless my going in and coming out. You know, you wanted God to bless you as you went through your day. And at the end of the day, you wanted to be still blessed, you know, by God. So that's wisdom right there, acknowledging God, you know, in everything that we do. You know, no matter is too big or too great, you know, for us to acknowledge God. Amen. Because we should always acknowledge God um, in everything we do. And righteousness along with that will take us further along the road. Um, does anyone have anything? Oh, Mother Givens is saying so. Amen, Mother. We do that in action to bless us and take us through and in the church and all his people and save me and save you. You know, you have to have that for something in your life when you say Amen. We need a mic. Amen. Amen, Mother. Mother Given said some um, good things. We're going to get mics just in case. Because we have um, three people here in, inside the sanctuary that have input. So we're going to get a, um, we're getting a mic so they could um, have their um, input. But Mother was saying it's always good. Mother Given was saying it's always good to, you know, acknowledge God, you know, get up in the morning, you know, and pray and ask for guidance yeah. or whatever. Because you know what, believe it or not, the enemy is already waiting for us as soon as we hit that door. He's waiting for us. And we have to mentally realize that the enemy is waiting for us as soon as we get, probably while we're sleeping too. You know, he's waiting for us. Oh, there's a hand. Go right ahead. Um, you know, um, I was... Good morning, everyone. Um, I was thinking about, you know, how Solomon could have asked for anything in the world, but he asked for wisdom, you know, and 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 that, you know, we, we if we would if it was left open to us to ask for anything, I'm sure that most of us would not have asked for wisdom. And, you know, that gave him a jump, you know, on everything, having the experience and having knowledge and being able to have good judgment. He had all that, you know, the, oh, just think if we all could have that. But what I liked, what stood out in the lesson for me was <clears throat> that we should give God our first few fruits. That part to me, that always stands out for me because I learned long ago that, you know, that when I'm given, I'm not given with a sorrowful heart or with a, the intention of, oh, I got to do this again. Oh, man, they're going to get all my money. You know, I, I give because God has been so good to me. Why wouldn't I want to serve him in any way that I could? And why wouldn't I want my heart to be open to doing that? So I think that this lesson is saying that the only way to have a good life is to obey his word. That's what I got out of it. You know, this is some sound teaching. You know, when we look at it, I, I, I don't know. Proverbs is so powerful to me, you know, um, and we got to obey God's word. And, and he instructs us on how to do it. So in verse one, he's saying, do not forget what I teach you. Always think very carefully about God's commands. Keep them in your heart, you know. And, and this lesson is really, really a good lesson. It's, you know, I'm, I'm with you. I don't know who all got their books, but, you know, there's a lot in here. You know, we, if we keep God's word in our heart, what are the, this is my question. What are the advantages of keeping God's word in your heart? Anyone answer that for me? Are there any advantages? 
lovely um sister Wright, i'm sorry amen um one of the advantages is that you don't care um by going on your own understanding just like the lesson says be not wise in thine own eyes but i think that's the first step is understanding that you know understanding our limitations and understanding who we are in reference to who God is. He's, you know, our father. He is much more obviously, you know, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His thoughts are way far off from ours. So I think the problem comes in when we start to believe that we have a level of understanding that we don't have. And if we really put him in, per in his proper perspective, then we understand that He's not only thinking about what's going on right now, he sees what's coming 10 years down the road. He sees what's coming 20 years down the road. And so we're working on very, very limited uh, perspective. You know, so that's is one of the advantages is that he can see everything and he has our best interest at heart for the long term, not just for the right now. And that's usually what we're operating um, in. Hey, man, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So it's saying, be not wise in your own eyes in, in verse um, seven. And, and you know, it's like what, what Sister Wright was saying. Do, don't be self-centered and puffed up in your own eyes. We got to obey God and be self-centered in his ways, you know. And we got to, th this verse is telling us that we just can't do evil. We got to think. You, you know how we get into it and we think we know it all? I already know that. I don't need nobody tell me that. I already know. I don't, you know, and, and be not wise in your own life. Don't start thinking you know it all just because you done got somewhere in life. Don't start thinking you know it all because a lot of times we get titles. And, and I, of course, I have nothing against titles, but I'd like to say that sometimes we get there and we forget where we came from. It's just like getting money. I forget where I came from because now those memories are behind me. Now I can do more. Now I have a higher status. But just remember, you know, nobody's high and puffed up in God's sight. So, you know, we just have to acknowledge God and don't think that we're so wise and all knowing and all thinking. And I, I want to say, I see Mother Jackson on the line. I haven't heard from her in a long time. She usually is quite Mother Jackson. Yeah, Deaconess Jackson, Mother Mother Jackson from Stockton. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, did oh, she oh, want? Did she want to? Amen. I am happy to see everyone, and I thank God for being here on today. And I truly am enjoying this lesson, even though the Sunday school girl did another lesson. So I got two lessons on this morning. So I feel like I'm double blessed. But we do need to acknowledge God in everything, even in the little things. When you open your eyes in the morning, you should acknowledge him by just thanking him for waking you up. And when you have decisions in your life, even though you do think, well, I can do this, I know what I'm doing, you need to stop and ask the Lord for guidance and wait for an answer and follow him, acknowledge him in all you do, every little thing. And if we do that, I think our life would be much easier and much simpler because we really don't know it all and God knows what's best for us. So we need to acknowledge him in everything. And thank you for this space, amen. Amen, thank you, mother. Does amen. anyone else? Anyone else have anything to say or someone in the sanctuary? Yes, we, we have our own Elder Smith and Missionary Smith. We thank God. We have Mother Givens, Sister Turner, and um, I can't remember the, mother, the other mother's name. The other mother, Mother Woods is with us as well. So we're going to hear from them. We have to get the mic though. So uh, Missionary, Missionary Smith is going to say something first and then we're going to hear from Elder Smith. Amen. It's so nice when people are in the sanctuary in here with me. That's a blessing. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Um, yes. Oh, hold on. Um, can y'all fix the mic? So, um, yeah. Oh, there she is. Okay. Can y'all hear? Right. Uh, I 
cannot understand her at all. It's muffled. He said you're muffled. Okay. Can you hear it now? We are having a, a slight difficulty right now. And so we'll go on to verse eight that and, and see, can we get um, the uh, technical difficulties dealt with there in the sanctuary. But in verse eight, it says, it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Now, isn't that something? Because if we follow and obey God's word, we are health, we're, you know, because when we in sin, we always sick. We always going through something. Something always wrong with you when you're sinning and you got a sinful nature. You know, when we're obedient to God, usually we have pretty good health. But when you're living in sin and you're doing sin, you, I'm not saying all illnesses are caused by sin. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that when I'm in sin, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I'm always trying to figure out, you know, my whole day is spent I'm trying to figure out how to get away with what I'm doing, knowing all the time God knows everything, but I'm trying to figure it out for myself because I think that I know everything. But then when I get into the word of God and I start and begin to obey what God wants me to do, I have where it says marrow. You know how deep that is? Marrow to thy bones. Your bone marrow is so deep within your bones. That means that's health. And I see Missionary Smith is up with the superintendent. So can we hear from her now, please? Thank yeah. you. Can y'all hear us? Can you, can you, hear, can you me? hear her? Well, she hasn't spoke yet. Go ahead, Missioner. Can you hear me, sis? Yes. Okay, okay. Well, what I had said, okay, was I was just agreeing with what had been said in regards to verse, um, it was verse five about trusting the Lord with all thine heart and then not to their own understanding. And I was saying that we do need to trust God with everything that we do, no matter what it is. And then no matter how much we think we know about it, God knows more. He knows all and sees all. We have, like Sister said, very limited resources. Our minds, we think, I mean, yeah, we may be smart and we may be you know, intelligent and all that, but God is way above us. And we have to remember that and remember to trust him and everything. Amen. Amen. We have Amen. Amen. Oh. Elder Smith? I don't need a mic. I, I, I enjoyed this. is a uh, great lesson. I hope you can hear me. Uh, yes. but, uh, like you, uh, my sister, that first verse kind of sets the tone to me uh, when it says, my son, forget not my law, but let thy what? Heart. And so the, I believe the heart is the meat of this lesson. Uh, because the heart is the reservoir. I don't know if y'all understand a reservoir. Everything kind of goes through the heart. And if you look at the scripture, the heart is the dwelling place of God, right? Um, uh, yeah. And spiritually, the heart is the core of us. That's our core. That's our being. That's who we are. It's our core, right? And so everything kind of flows through the heart. And God is saying, you know what? Trust me with your heart. Uh, y'all with me here? Uh, somebody said earlier that uh, we can't rely on our intelligence. I think I'm pretty smart, my uh, sister. But uh, all these years, my heart has led me astray. Hello, somebody. I ain't going to say nothing. Uh, my, my, mind, my mind got me in trouble. My mind led me into places that God didn't want me to be. But uh, he's telling us today, trust me, and I'll guide your path, and you'll end up in the place where I want you to be. Can we say amen? Amen. 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 Elder, that is so true. And then the uh, Sister Wright, go right ahead. Amen. I uh, have enjoyed everything I've heard. Um, I have a question. Um, this is bringing to mind something that 
I've kind of been learning over the years um, in my salvation is, you know, carnal ability is one thing and anointing is another or being spiritually mature is another. And a lot of times people have carnal ability. You know, they have book knowledge. They're, they're smart. Um, they can do things. They know how to do things. Um, maybe they've been raised in church and so they just know how to do. Um, but may not be spiritually where they need to be. So how do we, you know, sort that out? Or, or can somebody talk more about that, even in like positions you know, accepting positions and accepting assignments in church, like what part you should, in my opinion, you should be weighing more heavily on your spiritual, you know, uh, preparedness or maturity or where you are in God um, instead of just like carnal ability. But, you know, what do other people think about that? That's a question to the class. Anybody want to tackle that? Elder Moore, I see you on the line. Would you like to expound on that? God bless you. I don't know if I'm, I'm just listening right now. I just got online. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I didn't even hear the beginning of the lesson, so I'm running a little bit behind, but certainly uh, let me let me let me let me find out what y'all talking about first. Watch out open my mouth. Is that all right? That's all right, sir. That's all right. Anyone else would like to speak on that? Uh, could she repeat that question? Can she possibly re um, repeat it? Thank you. Uh, we're talking about the difference between carnal ability um, and spiritual maturity or anointing or spiritual preparedness. You know, God preparing someone to do something, a role um, in church or... Um, you know, carrying out an assignment for him. Where do you, where's the mm -hmm. differentiation between your carnal ability and your spiritual uh, maturity or preparedness? Missionary Bass, would you like to help us out on that, that question, please? Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, I understand where she's coming from. It's like, mm -hmm. if you're giving in a, and let me just make sure that I'm clear. If you're given an assignment, um, what part of you is the carnal portion and what part of you is the spiritual maturity? And so let's let's go natural than spiritual, right? Because sometimes we will take on assignments or do assignments that really don't belong to us. And then we we're sitting there going like, why is this not working? Why is this not getting anywhere. I'm God, I'm doing it in your name. But he didn't tell us to do that because the spiritual maturity in us, the Holy Ghost in us would tell us that either the assignment is not for us because we adopted the assignment instead of God telling us where to go in it. Or the fact being that the Holy Ghost is saying that you need to pass this on to the person that it really belongs to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it might be, so let, let, let me, let me give an example. If someone came to me and they were in, they were in a state of deep grief. Um, they had just lost more family members. I could pray for them because the Holy Ghost would say, pray for them. But as far as guiding them through that grief process, Holy Ghost would say, you need to introduce that person to Sister Smothers. Because Sister Smothers' assignment deals with dealing with people in grief. Missionary Bass's assignment deals with people who don't, haven't quite learned how to take care of themselves in self-care. That's her assignment. So if someone came to like missionary O'Mary and said, you know, you seem like you're so calm all the time and, you know, you think you have things together and all those kinds of things. What do you do for your self-care? And she's like, oh, I drive, you know, and I go here and I go there and I visit people. Well, what if they don't like to drive? Well, missionary O'Mary says, you know, those are the things that work for me. 
But if you go see Missionary Bass, she coaches people to do that. You know, you see what I'm saying? Because I know my lane. I know my lane and I know my assignment, but I also have to listen to God because sometimes God will give me an assignment that may to me feel like, oh, this ain't mine. This don't belong to me. And the Holy Ghost is saying, yes, it does. Because I'm going to use one of your gifts or talents that you can't see right now to help that person. So that's, that's, that's what I, that's my answer for the question. <laughs> that's my final answer, you know, for the question. And I look at it from, from that perspective. Always have to, if I look at it naturally and my carnal, I will do, you know, I will do, I will do what Cheryl wants to do. You know what I'm saying? I'll do what Cheryl wants to do. But when my spiritual, when, when this, the Holy Ghost speaks to me, when the Lord is speaking to me, that part of me has to be obedient to Amen. what is being said to me and learning how to hear for that voice, because he said, my sheep know my voice. Amen. Elder Moore, is your hand up? Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, I just called a little bit of it and just came to my knowledge, my remembrance. You know, there's a, there a little thing I in the church and I heard him say it. It made so much sense about two people who got up to recite the 23rd Psalms, you know. There's a difference in anointing and God anoint folks to do stuff. And then they got folks to just do stuff, you know, you just, they're so smart and intelligent, you know, they, their mamas and daddies were great downliners and they become under them and they just know how to do stuff, you know, and it's a, a blessing. But in that little saying that they talked about, they said, well, the girl went up and, you know, she, she recited the 23rd Psalm and oh man, she did a great job and they loved and clapped their hands and all that stuff, you know. And I'm sure some of y'all have heard the same story I'm trying to tell. And then when Mama got up and she was the 23rd Psalm, there wasn't a dry eye in the house because of the anointing. It's the anointing mm -hmm. is what destroys the yoke. Yokes are not broken, they're destroyed. Hello, somebody. And so in order for you to be successful in, in God's king, you got to have the anointing. I don't care how many rabbinical schools you've been to, I don't care who your mama was, your mama tutu or whoever she was. If you're going to work in God's kingdom, you're going to have to have the anointing because it's the anointing that drives this thing. And so in, 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 in talking about what needs to be done and how it needs to be done and stuff like that, if you ain't doing it under the anointing, you're just doing something. Mm -hmm. You're just doing something. And so, you know, it just came to my mind. I was just listening to some the other stuff I'm like I said I'm on a late show but the 23rd Psalm coming to my memory because they made such a great point on when two people do something one does it on the natural side and the other person does it on the spiritual side there's such a great difference amen and I just thank you for the time amen thank you Elder Moore and thank you Missionary Bass I hope Sister Wright but that your question was answered and that you're satisfied with the answers or else we'll have pastor come on later and answer some more. Okay, thank you as well. I have something to say about that question. Amen. I'm gonna bring the, my iPad to him. Okay, help us out, Elder Smith. Yeah, sure. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a great question. And a couple of scriptures came to mind. Um, which is 1 Corinthians 13. It talks about the gifts of the church, uh, the gifts of the spirit. Um, and then the other scripture that came to mind was uh, wisdom is the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get an understanding. And then uh, Timothy came to mind. He said he gave some pastors, some teachers, and all of this were, was for the perfecting of the saints. Um, uh, I think our sister's question was, uh, how do you determine naturally versus spiritually or something of that nature um and it kind of goes back to the lesson this morning we have to trust god i can have the ability to be a teacher uh, but as ever Moore said uh, i can be a, a wise teacher on school level but not have the wisdom of god to teach in his in his house can, I, can you say amen? amen and so god has to equip us for his service um again we have to kind of watch out for our natural abilities which leads us to a road of destruction a lot of people go down that avenue. Amen. Ain't that what the scripture says? But narrow is the way 
which leads to life. And so we need to get an understanding uh, of where God is calling us. If he called you to the ministry, you seek him. If he calls you to the ministry, I don't know about y'all, but I was raised in the old church. The pastor already knew your, your calling. Amen. And he is led by God, I believe. Place you in proper position. Can we say amen? But we have to watch out for our natural abilities. Again, I can be gifted naturally, but it leads me down the wrong path. And so, again, we have to kind of just seek God for understanding and get some wisdom of where he wants us to go. But your spiritual gifts has a lot to do with it. God gives us that. Uh, and we just have to walk in our calling. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Smith. Yes, and um, Sister Lovely Wright, um, just to add to your question, um, you know, there's a lot of things we all could do good naturally, you know, but don't mean that, you know, it's our calling or gift to do that. A lot of us are gifted, you know, naturally, you know, and feel, you know, that, oh, if I'm gifted here, or if I, I go back a little further, like, hey, I did this in the world and I was good at it. Then you come into church and it's like, okay, this, this, is, my, this is my niche right here. And sometimes it may be, but sometimes it may not be or what have you. But yeah, righteousness and wisdom, this is what we're talking about. You know, righteousness and wisdom. We have to know the wisdom and be, and be led by God because it told us to trust in the Lord with all our might. Just because we think we could do a thing, don't, you know, that means that God is in that. You know, and, and we will we'll be able to tell sooner or later if, you know, if it's, you know, of God, because, you know, yes. 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 God didn't take that away from me. Yes. But he got the wisdom of God and how to apply. Yes. Yes. Elder Smith was talking about Moses. Paul. Paul, about how. He was, he was a killer of the saints. He just, we know we, he destroyed the saints. And so after he got in the church, he after Paul got in the church because he was person he was greatly persecuting the saints. And after God, you know, saved them, he turned that around, you know, and God gave him wisdom, how to and righteousness, because he was righteous after that, after he, you know, had that meeting with God, he was righteous on the road to Damascus. And so you know, God didn't take that that zeal out of him. He just turned it around for righteousness, amen, and wisdom. And so, you know, that's a blessing. So God was able to yet use that, but then in a, in a, in a, in a positive way. And so, yes, righteousness and wisdom is very important. You may know how to do a thing, but we have to acknowledge God in all of thy ways, great or small. Any, you know, everything we need to acknowledge God, because I heard somebody say before, God sees up the road, you know, down the street, he can see the black ant under the black rock in the blackness of night. So we can't do all that. God is able to do that. Amen. And amen. And Elder Smith said, your gift will make room for you. So very, so a very good. Oh, uh, first, lady. first lady has her hand up, or pastor. First lady. Go, doctor. Go, doctor. Go, doctor. It's pastor, it's pastor. Yeah, it is, again, so good to hear each one of you and uh, all of the things that were said. And, uh, and Sister Wright, God bless you. What a, what a question. And it's an important question because sometimes... Uh, as I was understanding or the way I, I kind of interpreted that question is it speaks to individuals who know how to do whatever it is that they're doing, but they are not necessarily spiritual in that which they are doing. So uh, and so we have a lot of uh, people, as you said earlier, who were raised in the church and they know how to play songs, they know how to play the instrument, they know how to clap, when to say amen. Uh, they know how to speak because they have been raised in the church. They have a tongue. <laughs> they have a tongue. Glory to God. They know how to dance. Glory to God. But they do not have the spirit of God operating 
uh, in their life. And so though they know how to do, imitate, impersonate, perpetrate, glory to God, they are not living according to what God called them to do. And so we have to be careful that some of them are like the, uh, the, the church at Corinth. I was talking about this this morning, the church at Corinth, where, glory to God, Paul calls them saints, but he also speaks to the carnality of their lives. So we got to be careful because some of these folks, glory to God, love the Lord, but they haven't continued to submit themselves to the Lord. All right. And others are uh, in a situation where they just know how to do, have not committed themselves to the Lord, but church is their business. It's what they do. They feel like they've accomplished their mission with God. They make it to church on Sunday morning. And when they come there, they can clap their hands. Now, sometimes the people of God will be blessed by them playing the tambourine or playing the organ, yet they themselves, it will be unfruitful because they do not do it according to the spirit of God uh, or as unto the Lord, but rather to their own uh, benefit, to their own people hollering their names or to a monetary gift, whatever that is. We've got to be careful that we have the spirit operating in us so that we have the gift of discernment or we have discernment through the spirit whether it's the gift or not, but we have discernment through the spirit to determine whether or not this is God led, God inspired and God glorifying or whether or not it's a personal glorification. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. We um, want to hear from Mother Givens. She had some input about um, being led by God and whatever we do. Mother Givens. Go ahead. You want to say something about the lesson? Yes. The part that I really like is where it tells us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all of our ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. We have to know that we are put in the world, but we are not of the world. We are in there because God is with us if we accept him as our personal savior. Yes. And for us to do that, we have to stay in the word. You know, a lot of us come to church and the only time we have the Bible in oh our hand God. is when we come to church. Yes, and we cannot even find where to go, where they're speaking from. So we have to live this life to hear him says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That was been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many. We have to live in the word, do the word, sleep the word, wake the word. Don't go to bed without giving God thanks or taking you through the day. A lot of people don't um, have what you have, and we have this as long as we stay in the word. Regardless how we feel, we could be in the bed sick, put the Bible in the bed and read it. <laughs> because, <laughs> because if you don't do that, Hello? you cannot live it. You have to do it to live it. And when we live it, we can we don't have to worry about anything. Are we going to hell or are we going to heaven? Because the Bible tells you where you can which place you can go by the way you live. So live what the scripture says so you can hear God speak to you and say, well done, the good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mother Givens, for that input. Amen. We thank God for our mothers. Amen. Praise God. Is there anything else anyone else would like to say uh, about our lesson, righteousness and wisdom? righteousness and wisdom i like the lesson name it said by the end of this the lesson we will identify god's principles amen. for living purposeful lives we all have a purpose amen um elder smith has a question hold on for a minute oh how do you know this you speaking or not um elder smith has a question to the class he posed a question he said how do you know it's you speaking, speaking or um, God speaking. So that's to the class. How do you know if it's you just speaking or God speaking? And that's to the class. Direction where to go. And he's, oh, go ahead, um, Dick of this mother. The Holy Ghost. 
<laughs> will lead us into all truth. That's how we know. When we open our mouth, we know. Before we open our mouth, we know if it's our carnal mind or our holy mind. You know, we know. It, 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 that's how we know. It's in us. Deep down, like we talked about in verse 1, on the inside, we already know that it's not us. It, it, it's like, am I doing, you already know. Am I doing this as honor to God or am I doing this because I want everybody to see me? Am I on this committee because I think that I can do it better than everybody else? Or am I on this committee because God needs my help? He needs me to help the saints because he gave me this. Am I going to do it with humility or am I going to do it with my own boldness? With my own, you know, I was looking at carnal and you know, that's just, that's your willfulness. That's your nasty, evil mind. That's what carnal is, is what you do in your own self's mind, what you done laid out. You done figured that out before I get to church. I remember when I was young, when I was long time ago, when I was young, I would go to church with shorts on under my dress and roll around on the floor and the old saints would get me up and smash me down in a chair because I was just acting a, a plum fool because I thought that everybody would think that I was saved and they wouldn't know I was in sin and all that stuff. So, you know, my intent when I left home was to be seen. You know, my intent when I leave home today is just to get the word of God deep down on the inside of my heart. So it's, it, to me, it's your intentions. Your intentions will tell you long before you open your mouth that, uh-oh, don't you say that, Vicki. Uh-oh, say that, Sister Smothers, because it's the right thing to say. You know, God, the Holy Ghost leads and guides us in all that we need to do. That's my answer. Um, anyone else would like to answer that question? Um, Elder Smith's question. He said, oh, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring the iPad to um, our head missionary, Missionary Edmondson. She has something to say. That's why it's very important to have the Holy Ghost. Because mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost will tell you whether that person is hearing from God or not. Have you ever seen some people that just kept talking, talking, and you know it's not from God. It's just mm -hmm. from themselves. So it's very important, saints, to have the Holy Ghost and keep it alive and well so you will know whether it's God or whether it's Missionary Edmondson. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for our leaders um, gracing us with their presence this morning. They came in safely. We thank God for that. Um, Elder Smith, did, did you like to add to your own question? It's all right. I enjoyed what I heard, but uh, I, I asked that because uh, I'm a smart guy. I have uh, the, the book knowledge. Uh, but my mind can be uh -oh. And then the Bible tells me uh, there is a, another person that talks to me. There's a war in my mind. Amen. And so we have to always kind of keep our minds and our bodies subject uh, to the word of God. Is that right? Because, again, the devil, pride can get in the way of God's direction for your life. Can we say Amen. Uh, and pride is our number one killer uh, when it comes to uh, moving forward in God. Because my pride could tell me, you know what? I can do that. And I want this and I want that. And I'm, I'm called this. But my pride will eliminate my conversation with God. Can we say amen? And so we got to watch that clutter. I always use this, this little illustration. Uh, I don't know if people kind of get this, but Fred was on his way. Fred Flintstone was on his way to the supermarket and on the way to the supermarket uh this little green guy popped up anybody know his name oh, kazoo, kazoo. mr kazoo that clutter hello somebody he said he said fred uh guess who's at the bowling alley what does fred like to do fred loved the bowl can we say amen so mr goose kazoo said hey fred barney who's who's Fred's friend barney barney is in the bowling alley but see, before he left, Wilma said, Fred, go down and get the family some brontosaur burgers. Uh-oh. Uh-huh. And then, then Mr. Kazoo popped up past something. I'm making a little, a little thing here. Uh, he, he said, hey, hey, Barney's in the bowling alley. Uh, 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 go and see what his score is. 
Did Fred ever make it to the supermarket for his nap? No, because of the, the clutter in his mind, uh, the familiarity with friends took him off the direction where God was sending him. Can we say amen? That's amen. us sometimes. We got to watch that clutter. That's right. Hello, somebody. Amen. Mr. Kazoo is the devil cluttering your mind that, hey, I don't need to do, do it this way. Can we say amen? Right. Amen. There's another war. There's a, there's a war. Thank another you. Member. Thank you so much, Elder Smith. And um, while we're wrapping it up, I'm just reminded of, of um, going back to what Elder Smith said and also what um lovely Wright said about the spiritual the carnal man and the spiritual man you know you could have someone get up and speak so eloquently you know a speech you know a sermon but you let a a, a mother get up you know that may not be you know could speak that well or you know use all those fancy words but after she finished the anointing break out and people are delivered, people are saved. And so that's, you know, that's an um, example as well. You know, it's not about how well we can, you know, have our words, get it all together, whatever. It's that spirit of the Lord, that anointing that breaks the yokes that will, you know, send the word out to the hearers or what have you, you know. And so I just want to add that. And are there any more questions uh, before we um, bring our pastor up? Um, to do our review. I see him in the back. I think he's Sister coming. Wright has her hand up. Okay, go ahead, Sister Wright. Missionary Bass was before me. Missionary Bass had her hand up. I thought she took it down. She I did great. take it down because she was talking about wrapping it up. So I did take it down. Oh, okay. So do you want to speak, Missionary Bass? Yeah, because Bass was um, not inside the He's sanctuary. not ready yet. So go okay. right ahead. Um, well, when, when Elder Smith brought up, you know, the understanding and knowing the difference of, you know, hearing if it, if it's God's voice, if I, if I'm phrasing that question, right. Um, a lot for me, I can speak for me, um, using my I statements for me, it has to do with the depth of my relationship and my communication with God. Um, I know that there were things that I wanted to do and I knew it was Cheryl's mind and every time Cheryl tried to do it, it didn't work. But I remember distinctly one day and that's why I referred back to the scripture that says, my sheep know my voice is because I was working on someone and this was, I was, I was not in a praise. I was not in devotion. I was not doing, I was working. I was working and I was working on someone. I was at Google and all of a sudden I heard the, the voice of the Lord say, my people are dying and I need your help. I literally like stopped and looked around like, did anybody else hear that? I need your help. My people are dying and I need your help. And I remember that distinctly it was 2014 when he said that. And it was like, I had been searching and saying, God, this is what I'm doing right now. And I know you blessed me to be doing this, but what is the, what is the real assignment? What do you really want me to do? Now I took that and I ran with it in a different direction because again, I listened to Cheryl, <laughs> but when it all came said and done, and when God got me in a position again, a vulnerability, that's what he gave, when he gave it, it was a position of vulnerability. I was open, I was vulnerable, I was, I was able to be able to hear his voice and surrender to it. Then he said, this is what I need you to do. And he gave it and it was, the message was very, it was very, very clear in what he, what he instructed. So when we are in constant communication with him, when we understand how to surrender to him and talk to him and be in, in communication and close conference with him, you will hear what he has to say to you. You will know his voice. He's not going to scream it at you, but you have to be in a position of hearing to receive it. Amen. Thank you so much, Missionary Bass, uh, for the input. Now we're going to have our pastor come at this time. Amen. You can keep, you can use an iPad. 
one. Thank you for letting me use your iPad. Glory to God. I, I feel an anointing just because I have the iPad. And, ah, la, 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 la. Chevrolet, Chevrolet. Glory to God. <laughs> Bless all of y'all. Hope y'all have a sense of humor, those of you online. We are so grateful to the Lord for being here this morning. We honor the Lord on this first Sunday in September, uh, in the year of our Lord, 2021. Praise God. I was, uh, uh, first of all, let me share with you, um, I'm always blessed on my way from uh, our first service to uh, our mid-morning worship service in Newark to be able to hear the saints of God online, glory to God, and, uh, and to hear what they are saying uh, as a pastor. That gives me uh, a great sense of understanding about where individuals are uh, spiritually and in terms of their study of God's word, their knowledge of God's word, amen, and, and, uh, and I appreciate it. It also speaks to uh, consistency and uh, availability and uh, passion uh, because people that have passion for something don't let little things get in their way. People that have passion for something can't be talked out of doing what they have passion for. Glory to God. People, so uh, let me get back to the lesson. <laughs> well, in fact, I think I was in the lesson. In the book of Proverbs. That's, that is where y'all are reading. I got to tell you, because I was looking at another lesson. I studied a whole nother lesson about Moses and Miriam. Glory to God. In the book of Exodus, uh, I don't know what these folk coming up with, but the Lord it gave me something to say. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what jumped out at me, Brother Hunter. I want to tell you, I began just at the first uh, couple of verses in that Proverbs, uh, glory to God. Mother Givens, good to see you, precious Elder Smith, glory to God. Uh, and of course, to the super, uh, no, I'm going to read that out. Thank you so much. You've been, well, you on top, missionary. Glory to God. Thank you, superintendent, and to the assistant who, happy birthday. Uh, in a couple of days, uh, Mother Smothers, we praise God for you and thank God for long life. Let me share with you, though, the day before our, our, my 47th anniversary. Glory to God. It says, my son, do not, and I'm reading this out of the Amplified Version. My son, do not forget my teachings, but let them keep, uh, but let your heart keep my commandments. But let your heart keep my commandments. Uh out of the heart proceed the issues of life. For length of days and years of life worth living and tranquility and prosperity, the wholeness of life's blessings, they will add to you. For length of days and years of life worth living and tranquility and prosperity, the wholeness of life's blessings, they will add to you. Do not let mercy and kindness, and I want you to get this, and truth leave you. Instead, let these qualities define you. Don't let them lead you, leave you, but let them define you. Let them let people know who you are. Glory to God by your mercy and your kindness and your truth. The integrity with which God operates and directs your life because it comes out of your heart. It is passion for you. And so even though it's easier for me, y'all, I'm going back to my eight o'clock message this morning because the Lord dropped it in my spirit. It wasn't even what's on my paper, but I'm just telling you now, when it's in your heart, you will not lie about lying. You won't tell a lie and then lie about not about telling that lie. But or try and cover that lie with another. What will happen is the passion you have for truth and integrity and kindness and meekness and grace, that thing will be your guiding light. It's what people will know about you. And so Solomon in the beginning, Solomon in the beginning, y'all get this, in the beginning, Solomon said, Lord, all I want is wisdom. I want to know 
how to go in and come out amongst your people. I want to know how to stand in the integrity of your will and your word. I want to know how to do the right thing. I want to know, God, when to say yes and when to say no. I want to know when to go right and when to go left. I want to know when to speak and when to shut up. I want to know. I want wisdom, God. I want to recognize when I can have and when I need to leave it on the table. I want to know. But I want you to understand that Solomon, like many folks, wanted wisdom in the beginning, but then he wanted a bunch of women in the end. I know they both start with W, but they can take you to two different places. And that's not, you know, the women per se, but it's anything, anything that you place in front of what God gave you to live that wholesome life, which is wisdom in God, God's wisdom, the kind only here. And then you've got to put that thing in your heart. When it's hard, uh, when it's in your heart, it's hard for folks, my time is running out, but it's hard for folks to reach in and snatch out what God put in your heart. If you put it in your heart, I'm not talking about if you have it in your hand or somewhere around your shoulders or if you got it, glory to God, in your, in, your, in your back pocket. But I'm saying when it's in your heart, it's not easy to go in and get it and pull it out and change it. Even though you might stumble and fall, you'll find it back to the place where your heart rests. And so I just want to say wisdom. I, I, I wish somebody would write in the chat box, God, I want your wisdom. I want your wisdom, not man's wisdom, which is limited and often failing, but God's wisdom, which never changes. God's wisdom, which does not divert itself, which does not get distracted, which does not try and cover it with a whole lot of sentences, which don't mean anything the wisdom of God. And so I just want to encourage all of y'all this morning. Uh, I feel like preaching today. Um, I just want to encourage you all this morning as we look into this, consider where Solomon was in the beginning and what his request was of the Lord. And make sure that you don't, you follow Solomon while he's here and not Solomon while he was there. All right. Uh, and it speaks to something because it can say, I don't know, it can seem like it could say, maybe it says that we could be doing the will of the Lord and get distracted and find ourselves in a whole nother place. Stay focused. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Serve the Lord with your whole heart. It's a heart. It's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right, mother. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways. In everything you do, in all your ways. And whatever you consider, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. I think somebody said earlier, I think it was Sister Wright, but somebody said earlier about the fact that God's wisdom sees way down the road. It sees it from beginning to end. And we have such limited sight. So we ought to consider what the Lord says and let him lead us and guide us into all truth. God bless all of you this morning. Thank you for being a part of this Sunday school class. Amen. It is a powerful lesson. Sometimes when we read scriptures over and over, sometimes we take them for granted, for granted and we don't delve into them to see what God is saying at this season concerning the same scripture you've been reading before. Because you've heard me say before, you cannot exhaust God's word. There's always more you can get from God's word. Thank you, Lord, for the word of the Lord. And thank you for the people of God. Thank you for the instruction we've received today. To received today. It is truth and it is light. And it will, if received into your heart, bring life. Thank you, Lord.